I'm Chris Frizzoco with the Frizzoco Group here at the Jersey Shore, and we get a lot of phone calls from folks and inquiries with regards to they either just purchased a property here or they may have had it for a little while now. It's time to update things, and maybe it's going to be for their own enjoyment or they are actually being considered selling the property, so they want to look at how can I increase my value. However, they'd like to be able to do it on their own and not have to hire a contractor. So we're going to just cover a couple of things here that might work for you in your DIY, DIY projects. That's just, have you done a DIY project in your house? Uh, I have, yeah. I've, I've done a, a handful of them. Um, so rather, yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> like anything else, I, I actually, I enjoy painting. So, I'm, you know, I do the painting in, in, in my house. I make sure that we keep that up to date and that just gets something that's, it's done on a regular basis. And I know that painting may not seem like it's all that important. It's like, well, anybody can paint and maybe you should go neutral or what have you. And especially for resale. But what's important about the painting is it's just, it's always fresh. And you just want to kind of, the, the color schemes and properties change over time. It's not always just white. It's not always just gray or blues or beiges and what have you. So the color schemes change. So if you're thinking of maybe selling the property, you really want to find out well, what are today's colors? What are people buying? Because then you're going to want to make sure if you're going to do the painting, make sure you're doing it in the color schemes that people are seeing on a regular basis in the homes that they're exploring when they're on the internet and they're looking at homes. You start to see the trends on what has sold. Look at the new construction properties. Those, po those people tend to use designers who are up to the minute on what's going on in the industry. So you can really get some nice color scheme tips from them as well. Other DIY projects, you can you can go from plantation shutters to hanging drapes and blinds. You can do those types of things. Uh, luxury vinyl, very important here at the shore. I think it's the most ideal uh, product that's available because it's great for wear and tear. Right? I mean, you can, it not only is it great for pets, but most importantly here at the shore, it's great for sand. It doesn't really get beat up. It doesn't get all scratched. It doesn't really get worn or sun faded. So it's an ideal product for you and your shore house here. If, you know, if you're on the coast or even if you're inland a little bit, it's really ideal for our area here. So you can lay down some luxury vinyl flooring. Um, and then obviously kind of depending on your skill levels, organization is always key whether it be in the closets, you just want to make sure that everything is organized. So if people are coming through, they can see that these things are true, what size they are, um, especially if they are large walk-ins, you really want to be able to expose that and really kind of emphasize the size of that walk-in closet. So putting in like that kind of shelving in your closets, that's always a pretty easy thing to do as well. Yep. And uh, if you have a laundry room, hang cabinets, put in cabinetry in your laundry room. That's not a very difficult thing to do. Just make sure they're level. Make sure you're finding a stud or otherwise it's going to come crashing down on you. Uh, but again, these are all things that you could certainly do in a DIY project. Uh, kind, of, kind of a double-sided question, but we're going to do the, the first half first, which is obviously a DIY project can make living in your home more enjoyable. Yep. And because of that, goes on to improve, uh, improve the value. But uh, how has um, DIY projects that you've done improved your quality of life at, at home? Yeah, so for, for me personally at home, it's improved my, my life just from the standpoint of ease, right? So you're not dealing with carpeting, you know, what have you. So it's you know, always just lugging out the vacuum. You can, sweep, you can sweep, it's a little bit easier. So I feel the flooring is definitely something that's been really beneficial. Uh, and doing that. Uh, that's why I brought that one up in the video there that I feel like the, the flooring is, is certainly ideal. Um, ultimately, I think with painting, I mean, it just, it just feels better. I mean, you know, a clean house is a happy house is the saying, right? So, but it just has that nice new fresh feel. You can smell the paint. I mean, it just really, it just makes everything feel a lot brighter. It makes everything feel happier. It just has a real welcoming feeling when you have fresh paint up on those walls. So in, the, in those type of projects here, I think they're, they're just, there are things that you can do fairly easily. You can virtually change a room dynamically if you paint it. And then all of a sudden, cause you're getting into, well, let me, let me put in some different drapes or let me put in different pillows and different, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden you start to change the entire way that the room looks and it didn't cost you tens of twenties of thousands of dollars. You did it yourself and you did the flooring, you did the paint, and now you change some of the accent pieces and all of a sudden you have a whole new room that could have gone from just a drab room or to all of a sudden this big, this beautiful den, whatever, you know, but you can really make it whatever you want. And that's, what's pretty neat. That is cool. Home Depot 
coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Which DIY project would you recommend, and, and it could totally be one you've already said, for adding value to a home before selling it? You know, so the, yeah. for a DIY project, it's going to add value. So that can be tricky. I mean, I think that when you look at that, I mean, laying down carpet isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do if you've, if you've never done it. Uh, laying down flooring, I think that's probably one of the easier things to do because there's a lot of different types that you, know, you can snap them in. You know, they have the free floatings that you can snap in. It's, if it's a pretty square room, you can probably manage it pretty good. So I would say that would probably be the one I'd go back to to say, that one is gonna really add value. The other one too that, it's not always just building in value. I think that's one thing that we really wanna make sure that we keep a perspective on because sometimes it's just more about like, if you look at your home and you say, God, my, my bathroom fixtures and my kitchen fixtures just all seem old, right? Even just the handles on your cabinetry. It could be something that all of a sudden they get to be 20 years old and it's just a, it's just a style, it's just a fashion that's out of place. It's no longer around. Well, you very easily can go through your house and you can change all of your, you know, all of your faucets, all of the fixtures on your cabinets, and you can really change the look of your kitchen dynamically. We've actually, in our household, we actually painted our cabinets in our kitchen. So by doing that, real easy project, you can actually paint your cabinets, change out the handles and everything. You have a totally different look in your kitchen, 100%. Changing out the, the sink fixture, fixtures, again, changing out the cabinet handles, and then you know, kind of ch changing the color of the cabinetry gives your kitchen a whole different look. And that's something that you could really do that is gonna certainly could potentially add value, but more importantly, it's gonna show that the, it's clean, it's up to date, and that's one thing that a potential buyer doesn't have to worry about. They're gonna focus on other areas, but it makes your home more desirable. Yeah, that is, it's, it's not that hard to like replace a faucet. That is actually pretty nope. good. <laughs> nope, pretty good not advice. that hard. I was gonna say, have you ever had a DIY mess up? Have you ever taken on a project where something went wrong? It's okay <laughs> if not. Um, yeah, no, I have. Um, so the one projects that I think are pretty, they seem manageable, that could be real, a real challenges. Like if you have to re repair like your ceiling or something like that, I had a situation where we actually had, you know, a bathroom leak upstairs and was like, well, I'll just fix the, you know, I can fix the ceiling. No problem. I can get the, but if you don't put up the drywall correctly and then tape and mud it correctly, then the ceiling can really look off. Um, and that's just something when you're sitting in that room and you keep looking up and you keep seeing it, it's a little frustrating. So be careful on ceilings. Um, cause when you have to then put the mud on, once, once you tape it, you start putting the mud on, you got to make sure that it's nice and smooth and it's, it gets feathered out. If you, if you're not really skilled at doing that, that could really, <laughs> it could really show itself and <laughs> drive you crazy. But you, you'll see other people looking up like, Oh, what happened here? <laughs> right. <laughs> and by the way, when you go to sell, if someone sees that it's going to call attention to the, to the ceiling and they're going to say, was there a leak? And now you've got to, now you have to deal with that issue. So that one, I would say, uh, be careful on ceilings, <laughs> get help. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds very personal. Uh, in, in closing, what advice would you give to homeowners considering uh, a DIY project? Yeah, uh, so the advice, gosh, what a great question. Some of these were always, you know, you look, you look back at your own history and you're like, okay, I wish I hadn't done that, right? <laughs> so um, know your skill level, really. It, they do make it look easy on TV, there's no doubt about it. Just always remember, I, I would say in some of these TV things too, they do have crews in the background that roll in when those people aren't, like they come in for the hammer shot and the, the nail gun shot and then they got contractors in the background. I'm not saying those people don't know how to do their jobs, they do, but there's contractors that are going through that to make, to, so they can get it done in a weekend or in a two day series. So just know your skill level and you know, nothing takes a half hour. You know, if it says a half hour, it's probably four. You know, if you don't have the skill in doing it on a regular basis, that's a voice of experience right there. Um, yeah. So to me, I'm always looking at like, yep, do I really want to get into that? Because if it's not as squared off as I thought the room was, or if it's not as easy, or if the plumbing's not where it's supposed to be, that can get into a real tricky spot. And then now all of a sudden, not only are you paying a contractor to come do the work you wanted to do, but they have to come in and fix whatever it is that you've done as well. So now you've created more work. So I would just 
take a step back, know your skill level, and go from there. Yeah, um, yeah so, I mean, when it comes to DIY projects, they, they can always be fun, they can be enjoyable, they, they, heck, they can really be informative and knowledgeable. You can learn a skill from it that you didn't think you have, and they can definitely be challenging. Uh, however, just from personal experiences, sometimes that challenging is not a good thing, and uh, they can certainly go sideways if you don't have the skill level. So, uh, yeah, I would just always do your research, and then just kind of make sure that you know and you know and can honestly say what your skill level is before moving forward. Because once you start, sometimes there's no turning back.